The ultimate engine, I reckon, has to be a V12. And that's exactly what I've got in this Aston Martin Vantage S, an all English powerhouse. So I've also got a V12, however, mine is an Italian Stallion. I've got a 575 here with a V12 slap bang in the front of it as well, designed by Pininfarina. I adore these. Matthew, what have you got? Well, Tom, it's not all about size, but I've got the Germanic masterclass in engineering, the V10 in the BMW M6. Now, guys, who does biggest best? I think that's uh, <laughs> going to be me and the Aston. But should we have some fun getting to that conclusion? Three machines form part of the eclectic collection that will be on sale at the next Historics auction, which is happening on Easter Saturday, April the 8th. It will be at Ascot Racecourse near Windsor, which is exactly where we are now. Now, each of these cars I've brought together because their engines are key parts of why people want to drive them, of course. So, Tom, do you want to take one for a drive? Absolutely. Three great choices, but I think the Ferrari is the best bet. So, let's, let's get on in. Quite a cold day, and we've got 508 brake horsepower from natural aspirated V12 right in front of us, going right through to the back wheels. So, and also this car's not mine, so we're going to take it steady as much as you want me yeah. to hand foot it. I'm sure a little bit. I can't imagine we use all 500 brake horsepower today, but we'll, we'll try no. to use some of it maybe. It's got the Fiorano package. Yes. So uh, upgraded exactly. handling package. It's sought after now on these cars. If you're buying one second hand and you want an investment, they do all chase that Fiorano handling package. So it's got upgraded dampeners, it's got a different ECU which stiffens up and makes that steering a bit more reactive, so a bit more drivable, okay. it's stiffer suspension, it's got a stiffer rear torsion bar, so it just hones the car's package a bit more for driving. I see. So this car obviously replaced the 550 and this car brought about a number of developments over and above the 550. The 550 was a good car, but this really builds on that uh, and brings a number of improvements. So you've got better brakes, which I've just felt then. The brakes work unbelievably well. You've got a new uh, rear uh, torsion bar stiffener yep. here. Yep. This is new. 550 doesn't have that, or if it does, it's got a worse one. <laughs> but I like the 550, so this yeah. is in theory just an upgrade, a better car, a faster car. I quite liked the design when it was new. It was very sleek, front-engine Ferrari, of course, with that V12. Yep. And it's aged pretty well. Um, it has, and I think that's what Pin and Farina do really well. Sometimes when the designs first come out, they can either be a bit boring or a little bit kind of bit marmite. But as we've seen with the 550, the 575, the 360, the 430, the 599, and the F12, and the 458, the older they get, the better they get, they, they look. I think they really, there's something clever about the way Pininfarina do it. Their designs, they're not timeless, but they're kind of, they improve with age and they make more sense as we go along. We see all the modern cars, we actually look back at the Pininfarina cars and think, they're actually stunning. And I don't think your 488, your 812s are gonna be looked back at in 15, 20 years with as much kind of uh, fondness. All right, shifting down. So this is the auto box. 2,000 of these were produced, just over 2,000 in fact. And I think 246 of those were produced with a manual gearbox. In actual fact, this option to have an auto box from new is an extra 8,000 pounds. 8,000 pounds extra? To have the auto box, yeah. And how does it shift? It's good to be fair. I think there's a technique to it, I think. I think maybe a slight lift off, because it's obviously a single clutch box. There is a technique to it to do it smoothly, um, but it's very compliant. It's the same box as in the, uh, your 360. Um, it's a box that's been around years and it's actually pretty reliable. So these single clutch systems, usually they operate better when you're actually giving them a bit more beans, but yeah. this one seems quite comfortable. We're not lurching, are we, in between? No, yeah, your neck's okay. Yeah, no, I'm fine so far. Let me see how fast we get in a minute when I use some, a little bit more of that 500 brake horsepower with you. <laughs> <laughs> Not around here, or else I'll get fired. <laughs> I'm very happy. The road noise is fantastic. There's not really much. I'm not shouting. No, true. We are quite relaxed in here. It um, certainly doesn't appear to be as loud as we may well find out in the Aston Martin later. It's definitely not for your boy racer that wants to rattle everyone's windows. No, I can imagine custom luxury luggage behind us here on that trip down to the south of France. Yeah, I adore these leather straps. Obviously it's dark blue leather in here, but these leather straps on the rear mm. shelf for your luggage, that's obviously something that's carried through into the 599 that replaced this, then the F12, 
and obviously the, the A12 after that. They've all carried through that flat shelf um, with those leather straps and a massive boot as well. Yeah. So obviously you've got the engine in the front, you've got a load of space in the back. And actually driving around town in this, usually in a Ferrari, driving around town, you do feel like a bit of a wally. But this, I feel like an esteemed gem. <laughs> Ferrari owners out there, you know what we mean. You know, to be honest, if you're in a bright red Ferrari and it's making a lot of noise, you know, sometimes you can get a few looks. This is very understated actually, especially in this silver. This is good. Yeah, I could drive this all day to be honest. I might just take this home. You can have my, I'm not going to say what I've come here with. <laughs> Don't upset anyone. Do you think we've got space for the dogs in the back? Yeah, they could they could lie flat in there or something. Yeah. I think, yeah, RSPCA would probably be on to me. Yeah. No, you could strap the harness to that. Yeah, it's probably. Well, I think there's plenty of space. Else, it's yeah. like a family car. It is, very practical. Get all right, so head. come on then, Tom. Unleash okay. some of this 500 brake horsepower for us. Let's listen to that glorious V12. Three and a half thousand revs. It's revs to about seven and a half thousand. Ooh. <laughs> See a slight lift oh, off, yeah, yeah. and it's nice and smooth. But that, all the noise comes from the front on this, and it sounds glorious. Very Ferrari. Oh, it's good. And it hunkers to the road well. It does. The steering's got a nice weight to it as well. Owner of this car clearly has looked after it well. It really rides well. It's, it's not lovely. crashing. It's so nice. Such linear power delivery. That's good, that. And interestingly, yes, you definitely hear the engine. You definitely hear the V12 in this car. It's not exhaust note, it's engine note. Woo. Okay, boys, in three words, describe that for me. I think fast, comfortable and scary all in one package. But yeah. enough about Tom. <laughs> I was going to say, the last one was definitely my driving. <laughs> Right, shall we have a, a go in somewhere? I thought you'd never ask. Yeah. Come on, let's jump into the winner. Right, so here we are out on the open road. How many horses have we got? We have got 565 GGs. Whoa! Oh, that's a bit of a noise. <laughs> uh, so the normal V12 is at about 510, isn't it? So this 565. So that's a big jump. Yes, yeah. that's a huge jump. And that then puts this one way in above the other two. Yes, yeah. So there you go. I am quicker, more powerful. And in fact, when this car was made, they put Aston Martin's biggest, most powerful engine into effectively their smallest car. So if you discount the little Aston Signet, do you remember that little Toyota course, IQ thing? Yes. So ignore that, then this was their smallest car and they whopped this great big engine in. Because they often said that this had the best chassis at the time for Aston Martin. Yeah. So it was sort of the yeah. best engine with the best chassis, yeah. best package. Great combo. Yeah. So money wise, when it was new, £138,000. That's quite a difference. And it was right up there, you know, Porsche 911, Carrera S and the Jaguar um, F-Pace. Your, your, you're punching then big time into the sort of proper sporty versions yeah. though, aren't you? But £135,000, yes, yeah. that's really punching them. Because the original V8, I suppose, was £40,000 less. That was right down with the standard 911s. Big, big whopping jump. Yeah. But you could pick this one up at our auction. This has done around 34,000 miles and the price for this, the guide price, is about £60,000, yeah, so which is actually really good. I, mean, I think if you look on the uh, name no names, auto traders and piston heads, I think they tend to be a bit more than that because these are seen as real collector cars, naturally aspirated engine. And as you say, I think it was from the DBS that they plunked this out of, which again, everyone clamours after in the collector's world. Well, they put this engine into this little car and it, it is making a wonderful yeah. noise. I mean, strangely though, but given that this is the, the Vantage S, the V12 S, so the top of the line, the stiffer, the more honed car, it's actually relatively nice to see. It is, isn't it? I'd say it was quite supple. Yes. So we're, we're around towns, you get, you know, lots of... We're not crashing, are we? No, we're not, it's exactly. And this is an Aston Martin, and nothing's squeaking. I'm, no, I'm, I'm not hearing any and creaks. I know my Aston Martins, and I, you know, we've been through a couple of DB9s, and normally something somewhere's rattling. Yeah. It's lovely and quiet. It really, but even those little potholes there, which has gone over. Yes. Not too horrific, not, not crashing. I can feel them, but they're not. Yeah. 
beautiful, actually. Yeah. And it really, it's quite comfortable in here. I'm quite quite capable of sitting there, stretching my legs. Yeah. Um, a little few, a little bit of room there for Tom's dogs if he wants this. These not have, enough room for my I dogs. Think Tom said he had one. Yes, he did. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. it's a good choice for me to not give him this one, yeah. and give him the Ferrari, and pop <laughs> you in the more powerful car because he's anything that's noisy. Yeah, I'll take that. It's got a three-stage adaptive damping setup. So, oh, do you want to have a little play right. with some buttons so and we can feel? Down. One down here. This might well stiffen us up, if I do say so. And then, of course, if we press up here the sport button, so we've stiffened up, turned yeah. the sport on. Whoa! So that sport button, <laughs> that just brings every single thing yeah. to attention. And that changes from that gear shift we had earlier. Yes. That's gone. Yes. It's just immediate now. And that is incredibly, I mean, that is a lot of pull. Yeah. I've got the little traction control system flashing up going, good, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do some work. <laughs> no so need, my friend, I'll turn you off. You're the driver. How does that feel? Yeah. I feel like I'm strapped to a terrific engine with a pretty competent chassis yeah. and I'm just up for a laugh, up for a bit of nutty fun. And actually the noise, the nice thing about the noise is it, you, we're not having to go 105 miles an hour no. because we're getting that excitement from all that. Oh, look at that, that drop down, that's beautiful. Oh, ho, 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 ho. That's what I think these cars should be about, a little bit of drama, yep. a little bit of ear tingling sensations. It doesn't always have to be about speed and this car is one of the most beautiful machines knocking around. I really like the way that this centre console just swoops down and, and very much splits us. Yep. This is my cabin, you this is you me in here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you can't cross over here. <laughs> I, I really like the way it's, it's just, it's defined. It feels like it's absolutely fitted perfectly yeah. within this cabin. There's no, you know, nothing out of the ordinary that shouldn't be here is here. And genuinely, like the Ferrari we tested like last year at Vista, it does just have that ability to be very usable, but very quick. Yeah. Turn it on, turn it off, turn yeah. the dampers off, turn them on. You can relax, drive it, live with it. But it's also, in my book, because of that Natural Esprit V12 up front, mm. I think it's a genuine car that's going to appreciate in value over time. Yeah. A uh, bit like the DBS. I mean, as you say, same engine, but it's that top of the model. Still looks new now and sounds just amazing. And I've always, the Aston Martin V12, for sound, I think is the best sounding V12 on the, on the sort of modern car marketplace. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. I agree. Tom might have us licked around the track, but... Well, maybe not Tom's time car. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Oh, it's the downshifts though. The downshifts. Oh. oh, listen to that. Oh, ho, 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 ho. you could do that all the way home. Oh, Imagine your poor neighbours. Wow. One word for me about this car, noise. Unbelievable, oh. that was something else. Yeah, absolutely, horrifically fabulous. So, after the two though, I still think the Ferrari feels more honed and, and probably a little bit better to drive, but that, that yeah. noise is just yeah. incredible, absolutely incredible. I love the noise of this, I heard you all the way down the road, I knew where you were. And which one would you choose? Ferrari still. Yeah. Uh. Shock. Well, yeah. okay, so these two natural V12s, we've both had great fun in them, but what about my third choice, the BMW M6? Ooh. I mean, it's 155 restricted. It will probably do 200 miles an hour. It's the V10 from the M5, so it's a great engine. Yeah. It's lighter and shorter wheelbase, of course, because it's got that carbon fiber roof. Oh, yeah, yeah. A lot of power, V10 collectible engine. I think this could be a sensible option to the V12s. Shall I get in? Let's yes. see how it sounds. Yes, please. Let's hear what your two less cylinders sound like. <laughs> you can turn it on whenever you like. It's not a hybrid. <laughs> right, guys, I'll leave you to wrap up. I'm going to head off and I'll see you at the next auction. Okay, bye. See you soon. Thanks for your help today, mate.
Well, there is still plenty of time to sell your car at the next Historics auction if you want to do that. Please get in touch with the team. Now, the next auction itself is here at Ascot. The preview days are Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. And then the auction itself is Saturday, the 8th of April. You do need to register if you want to make a bid for any car. And you can do that online or when you are here. And now it's over to Tom for more details of how you can get in touch with us. Thank you very much. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the subscribe button here on YouTube. And if you're a podcast person, make sure you go and follow the historic auctions podcast on all the usual streaming platforms finally last but not least follow us on instagram as well because you get a little sneak peek of all the cars ahead of the next auction and you get a little heads up before they hit the catalog and the final thing if you've got this far in the video make sure you leave a comment now we're going to leave you alone <laughs> bye <Thank> you. <laughs>